Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, like Jeremy said, we're going to be taking a look at what is new on some features with the MetroScan Black Elite. So this is an upgrade to the older model of MetroScan, and it co comes with it a, a few different features that really improve performance and improve uh, ease of use. So first, let's just go over some quick overview of how the MetroScan works. So what I have here in the foreground is the part that I'm going to be scanning. So in order to get a meaningful and accurate scan, there are two pieces of information that I need um, about this set. The first is going to be the surfaces that I'm looking at. So how do I get what those surfaces look like, their shapes, and all that kind of information into the computer? And the way that that is acquired is with lasers. So the scanner, which is this unit here, will project lasers and there's two cameras here that will watch those lasers and how they deform on the surface of the part, and that allows us to get that surface deviation information. So that's how we grab what the surface looks like. The second piece of information is we need to know where that surface is in 3D space. We need to be able to link all those different data points that we gather from the lasers and be able to uh, put those together in a meaningful model. And there's a couple of different ways that the MetroScan system pulls location information together to create a reference frame. I'll draw your attention back here to this camera system you see in the corner of the room here. This is called the C-Track. This is kind of the, the main uh, piece of equipment in charge of creating our reference frame. Those two cameras watch uh, me as I scan with the scanner and watch the part in order to link those two in 3D space. And the way that it does that is with these small reflector targets right here, if you can see them. You've got these little black and white reflector targets, and these are a known value to both the C-Track as well as the MetroScan scanner unit, and that allows us to build up a reference frame and connect those two in 3D space. So the C-Track is using these reflector targets both on the part and on the scanner, if you remember. We've got quite a few reflectors on here, kind of a disco ball looking shape, and uses that positional information in order to connect those two together so that when the scanner picks up surface information, it can connect that together in a meaningful way. So what we're going to do to start off with when we set up a part is we're gonna place these positional targets around here. I've got this on a, a Lazy Susan rotary table just to make it easy for demonstration purposes. And I've got, you can see a, a bunch of different targets all around here in order to capture what's going on. The C-Track needs to be able to see a minimum of five targets at any time in order to create a robust enough um, uh, reference frame so that we can continue to scan. So that's why you see some uh, different targets from a bunch of different angles so that when I change the angle of the part relative to the C-Track camera system in the back, it'll still be able to collect meaningful data. So our first step here is going to be to create our reference frame. And this is where a new function of the MetroScan Black comes into play, which is automatic target acquisition. So before, we would have to kind of take this in bytes, kind of like take a photograph, if you will, and a, a target collection from this angle, move the part a little bit, take another exposure, move the part a little bit, take another exposure. It was very a, a stop and go kind of a process. But now what we can do is if we come back over here to the laptop with uh, software, is we can run this automatic volume extension function. And what this is going to do is it's just going to constantly be looking for targets. And you can see right off of the bat, it has recognized five targets just on what it's seeing right away. And all I have to do as a user is just move this around and we'll see more and more targets be acquired as we go around and expose different areas of the parts and different targets to the C-Track. You can see I'm up to 10 targets, it's gonna keep climbing. And I'm just gonna do this until I have a full rotation around my part. And once I have that, I'm going to be able to post-process this. And, and what it's doing right now is it's actually building a photogrammetry model. So it's a little bit different than the way it did it before. So it's Essentially, a very basic way is that saying it's taking a lot of photographs of what's going on, and we're going to post-process this and build that into our final reference model. So once we have that done, you can see in the model, we, all we have acquired are those targets, and we've got a bunch of different ones. We've got five, five out of our 28 targets that are highlighted, and that means those are the five that we're able to see right now. 
So you see how quickly I was able to, to acquire all 28 of those targets just by turning that part around very, very quickly. Um, these flat targets are not the only targets that we can use with this system. Though. We've got a bunch of different other target shapes. I'm going to show you guys one of my favorite ones, which are these swivel targets here. So these flat targets that we have on the surface of the part right here, these are defining in space a point. So it's just a single point XYZ coordinate system relative to the other ones. These swivel targets that we have here, you can see they're a different shape. They, they still have the same reflector on there, but they're swivel around their axis. And what this is doing, this is defining an axis as opposed to a point. And what this allows us to do is we can use these targets from a bunch of different angles. So I'm going to be acquiring them from this angle where the, the C-Track can see them right now because all the reflectors are pointing back towards the camera. Once I give this part a 180, I can just turn these swivel targets around and they're still going to define that same axis. So it can allow us to have a, a reference that is seen from multiple different angles. So the point I'm getting at here is that there's just a bunch of different ways to set it up with the reflector targets. There's a bunch of different tools that come with the MetroScan to build that up. You're not limited to just those flat targets. So that manual process of acquiring these targets is going to look like this. We're going to make sure all of our targets are facing the C-Track so that we can see them. And if you notice, in software, I now have these three targets that have appeared that are not in our reference frame. We've got the five originals that we can see, and now you've got these three new ones. And we're going to come over here, we're going to do a manual target detection, and I'm going to select these three new targets, and I'm going to define them as swivel targets in our in our model. So I've got these three, I'm going to call them swivel, except, and now these have been added to our, uh, our reference frame. So now we've got nine out of 31 that are visible. And like I said, if I turn this around to where now I, I cannot see them, but you guys can see them now because they're facing that camera, but they're not facing our C-Track system. Now, if I just Turn this around in space so the C track can see it. Now we have those targets being visible, right? So now they're popping invisible there. So it's just another way, like I said, to uh, be able to extend that reference frame a little bit further and different ways to kind of skim the cat if you want. So I'm just going to set these up here so that they can be seen. So we went through all that to be able to set up a robust enough reference frame so we can scan this part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start a scan and we're going to be able to see very visually on the screen this frame pop into view. So now when I'm scanning, what I need to keep in mind is I need to be able to see the reference frame of this weldment frame, which I've done a, a good amount of work to make sure I have a very robust reference frame from every angle. Normally when I'm setting up a new part, there's going to be a, a times where you're going to find an angle where your targets weren't dense enough and you weren't able to see what's going on as you get there. It's not the end of the world. You just pause what you're doing, add a few more targets, and continue on. But like I said, we, we did a lot of work. We did our homework beforehand to make sure that any angle we're at, the targets can be seen. The other thing that I need to be careful about is I need to be able to make sure that the C-Track can see the metro scan at all times. For instance, if I stand right here, and hide the MetroScan to the C-Track, I won't be able to acquire any data because the C-Track doesn't know where the MetroScan is. I have the MetroScan out to my side. Now the C-Track has line of sight of the scanner and I can scan successfully. That's just something that I'm keeping in the back of my head as I go along here. So once we have this set up, I can just start the scanning process and you can see on software, I'm actually gonna tweak some settings real quick here. I'm going to increase the shutter speed on the camera to deal with a little bit darker part. But as you can see, it's a very visual, almost like spray painting process. And I'm just going to go across any areas of the part that I wish to scan. I can scan the whole thing. I can scan part of it. It doesn't matter. I don't have to scan the entire thing if I don't want. But it's just like spray painting. I can even have the part move on the Lazy Susan as it goes because the scanner system is none the wiser. If I'm moving the scanner or the part's moving under its own volition, the point is, is that the targeting system is not moving relative to the part. So that's why we can do this, is this flexible targeting system. That's 
It's a very common theme across all uh, preform pieces of equipment is this flexible uh, reference frame system and allows for very portable setups, um, very flexible setups where parts don't have to be bolted down or anything like that. It really it increases the ease of use very, very uh, well, in my opinion. I'm just going to keep moving this around, giving you a good bit. And so what you see happening here is that right there at that angle, I don't have enough targets in view of my part. So it's going to pause the scan, and it's not going to be shiny lasers or anything else like that until I move to a point where now I have enough targets. So if you do get to a point where you don't have enough targets, again, it's not the end of the world. It's just going to pause the scan, and it's going to wait until you move to an area that has enough targets. You always need to keep those targets in view. Again, another angle where we didn't have enough targets, and now I can just move a little bit, and we'll be able to get it I can also go in here and get some of the interior of this frame. Again, pausing where it's missing. Now it's it's blocking the, the metro scan from being blocked. So I'm just finding different angles to try and make sure that the C track can see what I'm scanning and the metro scan. Uh, uh, target system as well. It's just kind of a game of, of looking from the perspective of the equipment to make sure that the C track can see what it's trying to see. So I go through and I can make as much of, uh, of a scan of this frame as I want to, or as little of it as I want to. Let's say we look through in a pause. You got a pretty good amount, and you see maybe on this corner over here, we didn't get such a great scan. We, we see holes in the scan, and like I said, this is a very visual process. So if there's areas that look like you didn't scan, you didn't scan them. You need to go back and rescan that. But the benefit of this targeting system is that it's not the end of the world. I don't have to restart the scan now that I paused it and go back and go from square one. I can just walk over my scanner and restart and grab that area. In a little bit higher definition. It was uh, this one. So it's very, very forgiving. You don't have to get it right on the first try, which is a huge plus in my opinion, because a lot of the times it is very difficult to kind of predict where you're going to have problem spots on your part until you get to that point. So having the ability to not have to restart the scan every time you make a minor mistake is a, a huge, huge benefit. I can continue scanning on as much of this as I, as I want to. Pause the scan. Another thing I want to mention, um, if you notice that we're scanning with blue lasers, the older metro scan scanned with red lasers. And the differences between those two is that the blue laser system, they're a little bit more intense lasers, and there's a little bit um, extra software programming that went on in order to make these a lot more robust in terms of the surface finishes that the, the lasers can acquire. Uh, a tagline that I often use talking to new customers that are looking at these kind of solutions is that if you can't see it, you can't scan it. The cameras are, are relying on line of sight of the lasers in order to be able to create that surface in our reference frame. So one, if the lasers are blocked by like a, a overhang or, or any down a deep hole or something like that, we're not going to be able to grab the surface. But also, if the surface finish of the part is messing with the lasers in the camera's eyes in any way, that can cause issues as well. So with the blue lasers, um, with the, or excuse me, with the red lasers, there are some surface finishes that, like, that could be too shiny or might be too dark to where the cameras couldn't see the lasers that may have potentially caused issues. With the more intense blue lasers, those surface finish issues are much, much fewer and far in between. So we can, we can scan shinier surfaces and darker surfaces with a lot more consistency than the, uh, the red lasers. So that's a, a huge upgrade between the previous generation and the current generation of MetroScan is that transition from red laser to blue laser. So let's take a look back at the software here. We're just going to take a peek and see what we scan. Let's say we're happy with this, and we're going to stop our scan process. Another new feature of the MetroScan is our dynamic environmental compensation. So what this is, is if in the past, 
you're using the MetroScan system, the MetroScan system takes into account environmental factors, so things like temperature, humidity, that sort of thing, in order to make sure that the scale of the targeting in the reference frame is uh, uh, as accurate as it needs to be to hold up to its accuracy specs. So this system is taking in environmental information. If you have a, a rapidly changing environment, let's say that you're scanning next to a, a dock door that keeps opening and it's winter where it's hot inside, it's cold outside, and you get gusts of cold coming across, your, your environment is changing very rapidly, constantly. Um, in the past, it would have taken a little bit longer for the system to acclimate there. So it would need to pause during scanning and it would need to um, take some breaks to collect data to make sure that we're in a steady enough state environment in order to get accurate data. Freeform has come out with this dynamic environmental compensation uh, uh, function in order to eliminate the need for that. So basically what this is, is we're going to be taking this scale bar. So this is a scale bar with a known length, width, all that kind of good stuff. You can see here. Um, so this scale bar has those same reflectors that we saw in the park, and the C track is going to be able to recognize this. With the idea being that this will expand and contract with temperature fluctuations in the environment, and we can just directly read off of this scale bar what the change in the scale bar is and use that in the compensation functions within the, uh, the scanning software. So all I need to do is place this somewhere in the vicinity of the scan uh, so that the C-Track can see it and use it for compensation. So I'm going to place it, a little cut off on the camera, I'm going to place it right here. And you can see it's on the left there. And I'm going to come over and I'm going to start the dynamic environmental compensation. And you can see that we are nicely within our reference frame. It'll take a minute to acclimate. And once it has enough steady state information, it'll stop. And you can see that we have a, a solid uh, reference frame with that scale bar here. And now all this means is that we don't need to worry about rapidly changing environmental conditions that won't affect the accuracy of our scale. So the scale bar is going to compensate for temperature fluctuations across the board as we go through the scanning process. So those are two, the, the automatic target acquisition, the dynamic environmental compensation, the blue lasers, those are three big features new on the MetroScan. We also have increased accuracy. We're at 9 10 thousandths accuracy versus 1.2 thousandths before. We have increased resolution. We have increased acquisition speed. We're acquiring at 1.8 million points per second with this new unit. Um, and those are kind of the highlights of the differences between the old unit and the new unit, the black unit. So to sum up, we went through, we grabbed our targets with our new automatic system. We built our reference frame. We scanned our part in ways that we were, and the different features that we were interested in. We were able to pause the scan and restart with no penalty. Um, no time loss, anything like that. Then we added our dynamic environmental compensation bar to the to the scene to make sure that we're compensating for any changes in temperature that fluctuate through our scan. And those are going to be the main differences between the old MetroScan system and the new Black Elite system.